So we're continuing with the Daily Gita, chapter 17, text 18, chapter titled, The Divisions of Faith. We're still going over the various types of austerity, tapasya. A quick recap, we went over and we talked about what Krishna's talked about, the austerity and the various modes of energy, material energy. Again, to reiterate, the effect the modes of energy have, we know that in ignorance, tamaguna, the effects are on ourselves in the short term, detrimental, and to others around us and to the environment, detrimental. That's the effect of the mode of ignorance, tamaguna. The mode of passion, the effects on ourselves and others around us is temporarily or initially, it, they seem to be pleasurable, but they have long-term devastating consequences both for ourselves and the people around us and the environment around us. The mode of goodness is different. The mode of goodness in the beginning, it may be difficult, but the benefit is also immediate, both for ourselves and the people around us. The benefit is immediate, and it also is long-term. The consequences, the benefits continue long-term for, for ourselves and for others around us. This is the nature of the mode of goodness. And then Krishna goes on to talk about, and this is what he's defining today. Yesterday we went over the mode of goodness. Today this particular verse, text 18, is talking about tapasya in the mode of passion. And this is really important for us devotees who are practicing Krishna consciousness, or not just for devotees, but those of us who are practicing a spiritual practice. The motivation for what we do is very, very important. <laughs> a quick story. I was, uh, when I was going to Gurukul as a young kid in Mayapur, <laughs> and I as a, over a particular period when I was a young teenager, I really, myself and a few others, really got this, uh, really began going to Mangalartik every single day on time, not only on time. We would wake up, bathe, get dressed, and go to the temple to be in the mandir, in the temple before the Kancho blew. That was the basic standard in Gurukula, to try to be on time for Mangalarti. On time meaning you're in the mandir, in the temple, in front of the deities before the conch shell blows. Uh, so you greet Krishna rather than you running in late and they are greeting you. So we were doing this, myself and <laughs> several of my friends. We would get up early, run to the temple and be there before the conch shell blew. Now of course, and this is why motivation is important, we were getting all kinds of appreciation from our teachers about, oh, Mahavishnu, well, I mean, it wasn't Mahavishnu, it was Vyasadeva. Vyasadeva, you're doing so wonderful, you get it from Mangalarti, you know, this is fantastic, and I won't mention my other friends. <laughs> it's embarrassing enough that this is me. And one of the teachers asked me, so why are you so inspired? You've been doing this for this <laughs> for several, several weeks now, what's changed? I pleaded that I was, you know, advancing in Krishna consciousness. I did not dare <laughs> reveal my, my true motivations for myself and my friends. The motivation was quite simply that the girls' gurukul had opened up and the girls were sitting in the courtyard of the mandir and we wanted to prance through the courtyard <laughs> in front of the girls into the mandir. This is a classic example of tapasya in the mode of passion. It's not about the Mangalarti, it's not about leading kirtan, it's not about giving classes, it's not about all these things that are part of our sadhana. It can be austerity, difficult. Getting a teenager up at 2.30 in the morning every single day is a tapasya, no matter which way you slice it. In devotional service, we talked about this sadhana bhakti in the previous class, in devotional service, it's beneficial, of course. But when it's mixed with Rajaguna, what happens? We're doing it out of pride. We're doing it out of the desire for some kind of nefarious, if you will, well, innocent in that sense, but an ulterior motive in getting involved and acting according to our sadhana bhakti. And it can be described as tapasya. Initially, superficially, it may seem like that's the case. But the fact of the matter is, is, it's tapasya in the mode of passion. And what does Krishna say in the verse? He says, this is neither stable nor 
permanent. And that's the key. So even if we're engaging in our devotion or sadhana activities, if it's engaged in a mode of passion, it is neither stable nor permanent. And the question is why? Why is it that tapasya, even if it's our sadhana bhakti, is mixed with the mode of passion? Why is it neither stable and permanent? The reason why it's neither stable nor permanent is because it doesn't speak to our core nature. We are ananda maya bhyasat. We are pleasure seeking. Not sukha, not material pleasure derived from the senses. Ananda is spiritual pleasure derived either from brahmananda, merging with the supreme, that's pleasurable as well, or premananda, having a loving relationship with the supreme personality of God and the devotees. Whether it's Brahmananda or Premananda, we are Ananda Maya Bhyasat. Tapasya, mixed with the mode of passion, does not speak to, does not touch that place of Ananda Maya Bhyasat. It does not fulfill that craving, that desire to experience Ananda. Therefore, whatever we're doing that is passionate is neither stable nor permanent because it's not touching our core being. Ananda Maya Bhyasat. So as we gauge in our, for devotees, this is very, very important because we think we're doing all types of wonderful sadhana activities. We're getting up from Uncle Artik on time every day. And the fact of the matter is, it's just because Mahavishnu and uh, Vyasadeva and his cronies want to go and prance in front of the girl's guru kula. We have to understand, we have to be cognizant of our motivations in our sadhana bhakti extraordinarily important. Doing the puja, that's another thing. When I was learning how to, I'd gotten second initiated. <laughs> I'm giving my examples. I'm putting myself <laughs> in a vulnerable position to express or to share, to emphasize the importance of the poem. I had gotten a second initiation. I was 19. And I was doing Mangalarti for the first time. Big deal nothing to do with actually the puja I was doing to the deities. It was all about who was watching me doing Mangalarti for the first time. Austerity in the mode of passion, or worse, even in the mode of ignorance, actually, if you ask me. We all have to be cognizant of our motivations. Why are we doing the things that we're doing in our devotional service? In our devotional service. It doesn't mean it's not purifying. I'm still here. I'm still engaged in my devotional service. I'm still trying to engage in my devotional service, my sadhana. It is certainly, absolutely purifying. But it will be more so, even more fulfilling, have a more powerful effect on ourselves and everyone around us if we know what those motivations are, we recognize those motivations, and deal with those motivations. So we're in there and continue tomorrow. Hurry, hurry.